Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. You're watching In Deep on the Delta and today we're going to be talking about transitioning from bait to bait. And we're not talking about seasonal transitions today. Seasonal transitions are important, but we're going to really focus on your day-to-day -day fishing out here when and talk about changing baits from minute to minute. This is a subject that doesn't get talked about a lot, but it separates the pros from the Joes and even amongst the pros, the guys that are on any given body of water at any time and they can figure out what's going on and how to make these uh, bait changes effectively and efficiently. Those are the guys that are winning the tournaments and it changes all the time. It's not an exact science. So There's so much to talk about today. I brought my computer out. I don't want to forget anything. So let me get this set up. I've got a cheat sheet here. I'll put that away and we'll get right into the program. First thing we want to do is pre-trip planning. The more or the, the less time that you spend on the water, the more time you have between days that you fish, the more pre-trip planning that you're going to want to do. And that's that's pretty much, you know, fishing 101. Get as many reports as you can, talk to as many friends as you can and get as much information as you can. There are four things that I like to think about when I'm choosing my baits and putting my arsenal of baits on the, uh, um, the deck. One is depth, two is speed and cadence, three is size, and four is color. Those are the four things you need to talk about. When it comes to um, depth, I mean I want to have on the Delta, I'll have some topwater baits, I'll have some bottom bouncing baits and then I will have baits that will be uh, cover that water column in between um, you know the top and bottom which may be crank baits, they may be jerk baits, they may be chatter baits, they may be swim baits but I want to be have those baits on that will cover all of the depth ranges meaning that if I'm going to have a couple of uh, jerk baits on I'm going to have a jerk bait that may cover from one to three feet of water and that second jerk bait will be covering from three to six or eight feet of water. So we're not uh, duplicating baits as we're you know, moving down the bank. So that is uh, the depth idea. The speed and cadence idea is, again, we do not want to duplicate baits when we're trying to find a pattern. So let's just say there's a great topwater bite going on and I have eight rods that I'm starting off with and four of those rods are topwater baits and maybe four of them are you know chatter baits or bottom bouncing baits so I get out there first thing in the morning and maybe I start to throw a buzz bait if they're not hitting that buzz bait I want to have other topwater baits on that don't replicate a buzz bait meaning I don't want to throw a buzz bait and back it up with a uh, say a whopper plopper. Those are kind of two similar baits that are meant to um, be retrieved at a fast speed. So I want to maybe throw out that buzz bait and if I don't get anything on that before I start going subsurface I want to try my other topwater baits. My next bait would be maybe a popper which I can throw out and just pop very slowly and, and, and maybe uh, look for those fish that are not super aggressive but they're aggressive enough that they want to take you know a little slower moving uh, more subtle bait. My third bait that I would back that popper up with may be a Zara spook or something that's really erratic something that um, may be triggering the fish to bite. So think of it in that nature when you are changing from either uh, when you're talking about top water or subsurface or bottom bouncing baits do not uh, do not uh, switch from bait to bait and duplicate your baits at least until you start getting bit. Now once you start getting bit and putting a pattern together you can really start to fine-tune uh, the size and the color and we'll talk about size and color uh, those are my third and fourth uh, things that I think about. Size is probably more important than color to me and that's just really kind of fishing 101 again Think about what you are trying to imitate in the water. If it's shad and most of the shad are three inches long, you probably want to throw something in that three inch pattern. If you're up at a lake and they just planted trout, maybe you're better off going, um, uh, going with a big swim bait that may be 10 or 12 inches long. But just take that into consideration. Last but not least, color. 
because we're here on the Delta and we're kind of talking about what's going on in the Delta, if you look at color spectrums, look at what we have available to the fish year round, which are crayfish and uh, bluegill, if you cover the reds, the blacks, the green pumpkins, um, a blue back, uh, crayfish can have blue in them, uh, sunfish will have a, a yellow uh, belly, they'll have that kind of green pumpkin, maybe a little black, uh, you know, maybe a little blue. Uh, just think about that and try to match your colors fairly close to, to what, the, um, what you're going to be representing as far as what's in the water. Pretty simple. So think about that. Now, as the day goes on, that's when you can maybe put some rods under deck or maybe adjust some baits and that arsenal of baits that you have may get um, compressed into maybe lots of topwater baits and just you know baits that go from uh, uh, down to one or two feet it may be all bouncing bait uh, bottom bouncing baits but you can adjust that as the day goes by if you are setting up and coming out here with little or no info and you're not real familiar with um, the area that you're in you're not able to get a lot of reports as you start off that day you want to make sure you are changing baits quickly meaning that you don't want to come out with your favorite crankbait and throw that thing for an hour and not get a bite and then change up you want to take whatever bait you're starting with throw that bait for five minutes or, or 10 or 12 cast uh, depending on how how you like to fish and, and your speed that, that you generally fish for me, a lot of times it's only 10 or 12 casts, and if I don't get a, if I don't get bit on that one particular bait, I'll switch over, and I will continue switching every minute or so until I find a bait that maybe I get bit on. And again, once you get that bait, uh, bait that you find that gets bit on, you start looking at, okay, what depth is that bait that I'm running? what size and color is it and what my retrieve speed is and then you kind of start can fine tuning what are other baits that I have that may replicate that bait if in fact that's going to be the pattern all right let's go to the second page here three keys to elevating your success that sounds pretty pretty tough okay Number one, you want to think two cast ahead of the immediate cast that you are throwing. And we'll go over these. So you're thinking two cast ahead, you're thinking down the bank, as you're throwing your bait out here, you're thinking what your next cast is going to be. You want to work on physically changing the baits quickly so that when you see what's going on on that next cast, if you need to change baits, you can get the bait that you want to cover whatever it is that you're seeing down the bank efficiently so you want to be able to change uh, change that you want to focus in on minor patterns and a minor pattern could be as much as just uh, the difference between a four and a five inch worm that comes into play later in the day when you're when we're doing what we're calling fine-tuning our pattern so focus in on subtle or minor patterns and fourth don't let your confidence level drop remember it's not an exact science but as long as you're working at continually changing baits and changing from top to bottom fast to slow um, you know uh, different cadences and things like that it's going to keep your confidence level at, up hopefully as you change baits once you lose your confidence man everything from there goes to um, go south we'll put it that way so this has happened to me thousands of times and if you guys have been fishing very long it's probably happened to you and this is one reason why I like changing baits a lot I'll have a favorite bait and I'll get out and I'll really work that bait and maybe I'll overwork it I, I, I'm not getting anything but I know I like that bait and I've caught fish on it all of a sudden I, I finally get fed up I put that bait down and let's say I'm fishing a crankbait I pick up a chatterbait, throw it out on my first cast, bam, I get hit on a chatterbait and you think, man, I should have been using that chatterbait, it's going to be a killer. Well, you go for another 10 or 15 minutes and you don't get bit on that chatterbait. You go, what the heck? You go down the bank a little bit and you get tired of using a chatterbait and maybe you put on a, uh, 
a spinner bait. You throw out once or twice, man, you get a bite on that spinner bait and, and you're thinking, that's what I should be using. What's happening is the fish may not be on a pattern at all. The pattern is changing baits. And it could be as simple as you're ch you have the right bait on at the right time for the conditions that you are fishing. And I don't know if I'm explaining that right, but uh, I know if you guys have fished, you've seen that happen. As soon as you change baits, you get a, a bite right away. Why that's happening, for whatever reason, I don't care, but it should be telling you one thing. That's a pattern. So even if you don't know anything about the baits you're throwing or anything about the water you're throwing, continually change baits quickly. If you're not catching fish, 10, 15 casts, put on another bait or grab another rod and continually change that bait. I don't know. I don't know what that philosophy would be called, but it sure happens a heck of a lot. It's got to have some kind of name to it. All right. I, talked about keeping an eye on the future or down the bank so what that's uh, I'll go over just a little bit if I'm fishing a worm here and I have a little trough that I'm fishing it in I want to focus on my immediate cast but I want to be paying attention to what's coming up so that if I'm fishing a trough and maybe I'm getting to a point and that trough is going to dissipate I do not want to say throw the same worm or whatever I'm throwing in that trough because I can't efficiently throw that worm maybe out on a uh, a bunch of stuff that may have a flat or it may be overgrown like what we have out in here I'll have to take that worm off and put a frog on a hollow body frog so I can get it through some slop now as soon as I go through that slop I want to be looking and if that um, trough uh, uh, comes back into play I want to go back to that bait that I was catching them on or if it's a uh, if it's maybe it goes from a lot of surface vegetation to a flat that has uh, it's six feet deep and it has subsurface veg vegetation going up to three feet maybe I want to have a bladed jig that I can throw right through the top of that stuff or a, uh, a jerk bait that will run right over the top of that so as I'm going down the bank I'm focusing on what I'm fishing and I'm also focusing on what's coming up so that I know when that as soon as that trough uh, dissipates I'm putting that worm down I'm grabbing my hollow body frog I'm throwing it out over the surface vegetation I'm making a few good casts I'm moving down the bank and I know my next situation is going to be subsurface vegetation I'm pulling off the frog I'm putting on a, um, a chatterbait and I'm fishing the water that I am on effectively as I begin to put patterns together, then I'll slow down, I'll really fine tune those baits. I hope that makes some sense for you guys and, and I just want to say one more time, it's not an exact science. This is what I think about when I'm out here and I'd like you guys to just take all that information and think about it the next few times you go out and um, you're in this situation where you know you're changing baits around just give it a little thought and the more you do it the better you're going to get at it and the more fish you're going to start seeing uh, uh, come to the net so thank you guys so much for watching if you like this video make sure you uh, uh, hit the like button if you haven't subscribed make sure you subscribe and I'll tell you if you see me out on the Delta make sure you stop and say hello and we could talk about the daily pattern and maybe help each other out to catch a few more fish Thanks so much again for watching and I'll see you guys on the river. If I don't see you on the river, I'll see you at the next video.